In this tutorial, we will learn the basics of rounding decimal digits by going through several of the examples I've prepared. Now before we start, you do need to understand that each digit in a number has a position or a place. So here is an example where we have 3628 decimal 5634. The number 5, for instance, the number right after the decimal place, is the tenths place value. While there are different methods for rounding, and this ultimately depends on the field that you're in, for most purposes, the following procedure is suitable. And there are two things you need to remember. That if the first digit in the group of decimal digits that is to be dropped is five or more, then the last digit retained is increased by one. And if the first digit in the group of decimal digits that is to be dropped is less than five, the last digit retained is left unchanged. Now, if that's confusing to you, these examples will help you. In the first example, we are expected to round these two numbers to the nearest hundredths. So what I like to do is start by highlighting which number is in the hundredths column. I know that the number to the right of the decimal is the tenths, and the number next to that would be the hundredths. So that's the hundredths, and so is that. So I'm assuming that you already know how to identify the place value. Next, you look to the number to its right, the immediate number to its right. In this case, the immediate number to its right is a nine, and nine falls into the category of being five or more. Because the first number dropped is greater than five, then this increases by one, the one that's retained. So we end up getting 566.79. In this example, we have highlighted one as being in the hundredths place value. We look to its right, and zero belongs in the category of being less than five. And because that's the case, we don't round this up but instead we leave it unchanged and make sure that everything to its right is gone. So we have 35.81. Don't round down, just leave it the way it is. The next two examples, we round to the nearest tenth. We start by highlighting where the tenth place value is, and that's immediately to the right of the decimal place. So we have that and we have that. To the right of three is a six, and six falls in the category of being five or more, so that goes up by one to 0 0.4 and everything else goes away, so that's gone. In this example, to the right of zero is zero. Zero is obviously less than five, so we get rid of everything else, do not round this up, and it remains unchanged. Now also, don't write the number as 254 without decimal zero. You should include decimal zero to indicate that you've rounded to the nearest tenth. So a lot of students will write down 254 without the decimal zero and it's considered not correct because you did not round to the nearest tenth. In these two examples, we have to round to the nearest tens. So we will highlight the number that's in the tens place value. This one is easy. It's the second one to the left of the decimal, but this one, there's no number to the left of five, which is where the tenth place value would be. So write down a zero. Okay, to the right of this five is a four. Four is less than five. It falls into that category, so we will leave this as five. 250 becomes our answer, and everything else, therefore, becomes a zero. So that four and everything to the right of it became a zero. In this example, we highlight the zero, which is in the tens place value, and to the right of that zero is a five. Five fits in the category of five or more, so that means this rounds up one, and everything else becomes nothing, zero. And I won't even bother including decimal five extra zeros, because we are rounding to the nearest tens, we don't need all those extra digits. So 10 is the answer for that example. In these two examples, we are expected to round to two decimal places. So oftentimes when you're expected to round, the questions will be written differently, but they mean the same thing. So if you read something like round to two decimal places, it's the same thing as saying round to the nearest hundredths. We will highlight that number and that number. Over here, we have to the right of two is a zero. That's less than five. So we simply write down 9.22 and everything else goes away. And sometimes you end up getting a chain reaction where to the right of this nine is a seven. Seven is five or more, so this rounds up. You can't write 10, 
So you just leave the 0 and you carry the 1 to the next place value. You add 1 and 9, and that again becomes 10. So you just write the 0 and you move the 1 over to the next place value. 1 plus 9 is 10. You write the 0 and you place that 1 on the last place value. 1 plus 1 is 2, and that is our answer. So once more, you will report 20.00 as your answer, do not report simply 20 because it is expecting you to two place values. So watch out for examples like these where you have to carry the one over each and every time. And sometimes you get questions written like this where you have to round to the nearest cent. You have to use your math intuition here. Dollars and cents deals with numbers up to two decimal places. So to the nearest cent means two numbers after the decimal place. In other words, they are asking you to round to the nearest hundreds. For this example, the right of 9 is 8. 8 is 5 or more. So this rounds up. It becomes a 0 or a 10. You carry the 1. Similarly, you do the same thing until you reach this 8. 1 and 8 make 9. No need to carry anymore. And everything else remains the way it is. In this final example, we have 4 which is to the right of 3. That's less than 5. So this does not round up. And you end up getting $13.73. If you have any further questions about rounding, please leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again.